Shalom Israel, Charles Dickens, in his epic novel entitled A Tale of Two Cities, he quoted as follows, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the age of wisdom, it was the age of foolishness, it was the epoch of belief, and it was the epoch of incredulity. We had everything before us, and we had nothing before us. Hello there. This is your high priest bringing you word today in another podcast that is uh, uh, going to really, really, uh, you know, speak to um, uh, many of the social uh, issues that, uh, uh, you know, are surrounding us, uh, not the least of which is the recent uh, uh, Nigerian presidential election that was just uh, conducted uh, a few days ago. Um, they already, a lot of people are complaining and, uh, you know, threatening to go to court. So this is uh, yet another season when the courts will be adjudicating competing claims over who won and who didn't win the election. You know, the precipitous uh, decline of civilizations and moral culture begins, begins in feats, stars, and seizures. That's why, uh, if you recall, the, the civilizations of the Babylonians, the Egyptians, the Gupta civilization, the Han civilization, the Hittites, all uh, disappeared, uh, you know, slowly but surely. Now, Nigeria um, uh, is in the midst of, uh, 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 you know, sustained, uh, you know, supposedly social uh, uh, cultural uh, efflorescence. Uh, we thought uh, uh, the, this election would have ushered in uh, an era of, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, expanding democratic ex experimentation. But what we have seen from the results and complaints and competing claims is that uh, rather than expand the full arc of uh, democratic experimenta experimentation, uh, we are seeing uh, you know, democracy being you know, stifled and, and stymied because of uh, you know, rig rigging, manipulation, and uh, other nefarious uh, activities that uh, Nigeria should have been grown past uh, by at this time of our democratic uh, uh, experimentation. Um, I quoted the, uh, the uh, uh, long-standing, um, you know, quotes from, uh, uh, you know, Charles Dickens' book uh, uh, entitled the, um, uh, A Tale of Two Cities, because uh, an election also occurred in a, a relatively, uh, uh, you know, unknown country uh, uh, called El uh, uh, Salvador in uh, Latin America or South America. They had a, an election in which... Uh, uh, they elected uh, Na uh, Naib uh, Bukele as their, as their president uh, with no uh, uh, complaints, with no rigging, with no manipulation whatsoever. Now, when we, uh, so, so now we're beginning to see uh, uh, an odd just juxtaposition and, and uh, um, you know, you know, of, of two, uh, two countries, you know, two, two, two relatively uh, 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 unknown countries, one in Africa, one in uh, Latin America, where uh, in Latin America, election uh, was conducted uh, based on uh, uh, international norms uh, and conventions, whereas in our own country, you know, despite the fact that uh, we've been experimenting with democracy in the last uh, 15 to 20 years, uh, we're still having a lot of uh, hiccups. Uh, you know, in our democratic process. So I thought I should, uh, you know, uh, you know, bring that into, uh, you know, a few full, uh, you know, mention today uh, during this uh, uh, podcast. Um, I've been receiving a lot of calls. People said that they are, they are very, very unhappy, uh, particularly, uh, you know, with the re-election of, uh, uh, you know, the, the current president who they think uh, doesn't deserve a second term uh, because of, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, you know the systematic uh, decline of uh, uh, you know you know the people's purchasing power uh, you know the, the the social inequities that uh, have persisted uh, you know are likely to uh, you know exacerbate uh, in the next uh, four years or so of his uh, presidency um, you know I, I, I'm, what I'm in, engaging in is uh, uh, critical uh, you know patriotism uh, critical patriotism uh, postulates that uh, I love my country well enough to tell it the truth uh, that uh, we need to do better than this. Um, you know, you know, people, uh, you know, you know, we're disenfranchised in so many uh, places. We saw uh, uh, on social as well as mainstream media, media where people were smashing uh, ballot boxes, and you know, where people were burning b ballot boxes and uh, disenfranchising the people who cast those votes. Uh, you know, you know, from having their their choices and their in their voices heard. 
Um, so I thought uh, we must have to uh, uh, re, uh, reinforce our democratic uh, culture so that uh, we can be like uh, uh, El Salvador where uh, election was conducted based on uh, international norm and standards. Um, and this, uh, you know, a couple of days, uh, you know, this past weekend, I, I was able to meet uh, with uh, uh, you know, our very own uh, Remy, uh, Mr. Remy Ilona, uh, uh, the Igbo author, uh, Igbo uh, author and uh, historian, uh, you know, he's an orthodox Jew like myself, uh, who met up at the Los Angeles World International Airport uh, when he was coming back from uh, a conference uh, in uh, Miami, uh, Florida. Um, you know, I had to, you know, you know, in, engage in a, uh, you know, you know, sustained a conversation, you know, with some, you know, dissenting and diverging views, uh, as is, uh, you know, um, uh, expected. You know, both of us are, you know, intellectuals. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a social uh, cultural critic uh, myself. A social cultural uh, critic means uh, that uh, I uh, engage in the systematic uh, examination and evaluation uh, and excavation uh, uh, of uh, you know social issues in order uh, in order to f uh, prompt and promote uh, uh, you know avenues of uh, you know resolution in order to find uh, solutions to these uh, problems. So uh, that's why I, I can you know you know uh, you know you know, deconstruct and dissect, uh, you know, elections in Nigeria and elsewhere, as well as uh, the progress, uh, uh, as well as uh, religious, you know, ethno-religious issues, uh, particularly uh, the, uh, uh, the strong reemergence of Igbo Jews. You know, we did have our conversation, you know, it was a long drive of almost two hours from uh, Los Angeles to Riverside, uh, you know, where he's a student, uh, a, a PhD student at the University of uh, uh, UC Riverside, University of Riverside. Um, uh, we, you know, discussed so many things. There was, uh, uh, there were so many areas that we, you know, had a, uh, you know, a unanimity of vision. Uh, yet there were so many areas we had a, you know, you know, dissenting, dissect, uh, uh, dissenting, divergent, uh, you know, viewpoint. Um, you know, one of which is, uh, uh, you know, I mean, he took on bridge to the fact that uh, uh, Igbos, uh, you know, you know, practiced Omela, Omelana, you know, thousands of years, even before, um, you know, Anglo-Saxon, Western Jews, uh, you know, began to even uh, uh, tinker with the idea of, uh, you know, becoming Jews. Um, and th th therefore, we shouldn't even be describing ourselves as Jews, you know, um, which uh, a lot of uh, people who listen to my podcast have also, um, you know, you know, taking on bridge with, you know, uh, but I, I did tell him that, uh, you know, uh, it is true that, uh, you know, our forefathers were Jews in, in thousands of years ago, uh, you know, during the first uh, temple and second temple period, uh, you know, after the collapse of the second temple, after the destruction, uh, my ad of the second temple, uh, uh, you know, uh, Jews were dispersed. Um, but, you know, this is a new condition for the new generation of Igbos. You know, we're still uh, re-emerging. You know, we, you know we, we've been in the church. So um, it's possible that uh, we might uh, use uh, available phrases, aphorisms, you know, axioms like uh, Jews, Hebrews, uh, you know, you know, to qualify ourselves until um, down the road we're able to uh, be able to create and uh, um, you know create our own narrative about how we should define ourselves uh, within the broader you know matrix of uh, uh, you know Judaism. Um, now I was telling him that uh, in the meantime. Um, you know, we just describe ourselves as Jews or Hebrews or Israelites. Uh, as uh, more information becomes available, as we begin to exhume, excavate, and examine, uh, you know, emerging information, we'll be able to, um, you know, you know, tacitly, uh, you know, uh, you know, describe ourselves. But I don't like the idea of, uh, you know, pigeonholing or uh, seeing ourselves from uh, a circumscribed, uh, restricted, limited, uh, you know, point of view. Uh, we. Uh, you know, come from all the 12 tribes. We, it is not true that uh, Igbos uh, just emerged from the tribe of God. You know, for example, my own family may have uh, come from the, you know, the tribe of Levite. You know, we are Levites. You know, we are the ones, uh, we are the custodians of the temple, the synagogue, you know, uh, the, the religious, uh, you know, space. Uh, that's why in my own family, you know, uh, I, I was ordained a pastor. I didn't even ask for it. It was foisted on me because they saw my gift. They saw my talent. They saw, you know, how I can be able to organize, you know, things around the temple, around the church. Uh, one of my own brothers, too, is a, a, a pastor in, uh, you know, Lagos, Nigeria. My father was a, um, 
an elder of the church and uh, was uh, um, in charge of so many uh, of the committees. Uh, my mother was a, wom a woman, a woman leader in the church. I have a lot of my sisters who are, you know, uh, you know, pioneers in the church. They are choirs, you know, choir members, ushers, and they, they always have responsibility. That's why I'm of the opinion that uh, I personally may have uh, come from the tribe of uh, Levi. You know, I, um, and then uh, we also talked about uh, um, the issue of. Uh, uh, it was a uh, seeking validation. I've, I've, I've made this clear in uh, many of my videos uh, from uh, Anglo-Saxon Western you know, Jews in Israel. Uh, we must uh, slow down and seek validation within ourselves. We had a unanimity of uh, you know, vision based on uh, uh, seeking of affirmation and validation. We don't think it's necessary. Uh, I mean, if, if uh, uh, some authorities elsewhere validate you, now what? But the best validation is when you validate yourself. And um, I did mention to him too that, uh, uh, you know, to the you know, credit of uh, many Igbos who are, uh, you know, living in droves, you know, from the churches and uh, returning to their roots and uh, their ancestry, their background uh, in Judaism. Um, I give them credit. You know, a lot of them are very enthusiastic. Uh, they are not perturbed about DNA or, you know, people's opinion. Because I was reading, uh, you know, because I read everything people sent to me where uh, a certain uh, you know anglo-saxon jew you know traveled to nigeria um and then when he went back to i think the united states or to israel uh he said well you know he was asked about his opinion he said well i, I think the people are enthusiastic about the Torah." so he spoke uh, tongue-in-cheek he didn't he didn't come out uh you know to forcefully uh you know tell the world that yes these people are jews uh, they are practicing the they are practicing the Torah. They are, um, you know, you know, they have their synagogues, and there's no going back. So, you know, narratives like that can be quite uh, disquieting. Uh, it can be uh, demoralizing. Uh, it can create some dissonance. But uh, despite, uh, you know, the, the the naysayers and the cynics, uh, people are just, uh, you know, you know, imagine strongly. Uh, and, uh, you know, practicing their Omenana, uh, practicing their, you know, Judaism, uh, you know, opening up uh, synagogues uh, in so many places. And I want to give kudos to all of uh, all our people who are emerging. Uh, you know, my inbox, my inbox in Facebook is full. Every time people are, <coughs> you know, people who uh, see uh, the efforts and endeavors I've been making to, uh, you know, uh, you know, make, uh, you know, visible, to create visibility about, uh, regarding uh, our, pop, our people's uh, re-emergence. Uh, even though uh, uh, um, uh, Remy Ilona said I shouldn't be using the word re-emergence, I should be saying emergence or use another, um, you know, verb. Uh, emergence is a verb, it's an action word. Um, but, uh, you know, um, in absence of a, a better, uh, you know, terminology, I'm going to still be using re-emergence. Because, uh, um, you know, our forefathers were Jews thousands of years ago, so they are offspring, you know, and that's us. We are now, uh, you know, following in their footsteps. Um, so we did uh, have a, you know, a serious, uh, you know, sustained uh, conversation in, uh, uh, you know, various phase of, uh, um, you know, our national life, he, you know, he... Uh, went to make a presentation where he, you know, mentioned Biafra and the struggles of the Igbo people uh, within uh, the national identities of Nigeria, and then he did, uh, you know, also uh, he took a, a, a walk in the past about uh, some of the existential melancholy that uh, our people uh, endured uh, in, uh, you know, three years of war. Uh, you know, that we were not actually fighting Nigerians. We were actually fighting Britain, Russia, and Egypt. And I thought that was a, a, a very unique, uh, uh, you know, perspective about what, uh, uh, you know, existential, um, you know, um, uh, you know, fundamental uh, uh, existential uh, melancholy that, uh, uh, you know, our people, uh, you know, ha had to deal with. And that, in a sense, uh, you know, is one of the things that uh, has uh, sustained our people. Uh, you know, that, uh, uh, that resilience, you know, has served so powerfully the survival needs of our people, even in the postmodern, uh, you know, uh, Nigerian era. Uh, so I thought that was a, a very, um, a, you know, erudite, uh, you know, insightful, uh, you know, um, narrative that uh, he, you know he tried to craft about around the uh, the war of independence, uh, you know, between 1967 and uh, 1970, um, and then uh, you know we we also talked about uh, you know uh, the the way uh, you know Israel, you know, um, you know why we must support Israel, you know. Um, as uh, 
uh, you know, as our brothers, we must uh, you know look at ourselves as equals. You know, we're not gonna be subservient. You know, or, or you know, you know, put ourselves in a a, a way that uh, other nationalities like the Ethiopians, uh, you know, have found themselves in Israel, where they, you know, some people say they they consider themselves as second class citizens. We are not going to, uh, you know. Uh, you know, find ourselves in that kind of circumscribed, uh, limited, restricted, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, lens. Uh, as other, you know, uh, minorities in Israel, we're going to see ourselves, uh, Igbo Jews will see Israel as uh, equal partners. We're not going to be subservient. We're not going to, um, you know, pander, uh, you know, kiss up to anybody. Uh, you know, we're going to continue to practice Judaism based on our, uh, on our own, uh, you know, you know, Judaic, you know, re, you know Hebrew roots. Um, and then, you know, we have open arms. Israel can come and embrace us. Uh, we're, gonna, we're, we're waiting for Israel with open arms. You know, those of them uh, who have already embraced us, like uh, Rabbi uh, Harry uh, Rosen, Rosenberg, he has a nuanced, uh, complicated understanding of Judaism, that Jews come uh, from, uh, Jews come from uh, different uh, corners of the planet. They come in different, you know, you know colors, sizes, and shapes. Um, you, know, uh, you, know, you know, people who see Judaism... Um, uh, you know, you know, very simplistic, uh, reductionistic. Uh, you know, you know, black and white uh, prism. Uh, you know, in my considered judgment, are uh, missing the point. You know, uh, you know, uh, King Solomon himself had uh, you know 700 uh, foreign wives and over 300 concubines, many of whom were Igbo women. Because I know the poor women will leverage on the man's, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, weakness. You know, he, he, you know, he, he, he had weakness around his loins. Um, you know, that's why he, you know, he had roving eyes, and uh, you know, was, uh, you know, very, uh, you know, he got to, you know, sample, uh, you know, anything, in, you know, in skirt. So, uh, so if he had uh, seven hundred, uh, uh, you know, foreign wives, foreign wives, they were not just, uh, you know, Jews. They were foreign wives and uh, 300 concubines. So chances are that uh, he must have, uh, you know, spread his, uh, um, you know, seed uh, all around the world. So the idea of, uh, you know, seeing Jews as just uh, people with uh, light skin, you know, uh, blue eyes and blonde hair, uh, to me, uh, in my considered uh, opinion, uh, is also, you know, missing a very important point right there. So um, uh, we did, uh, you know, have a unanimity of, uh, you know, agreement uh, or purpose that uh, Igbo Jews must uh, stop uh, seeking validation, affirmation, uh, you know, from any any uh, quarters other than within themselves. Uh, we must first of all love ourselves. We must first of all love ourselves. We must first of all validate ourselves as Jews, or Hebrews, or Israelites, or whatever we want to call ourselves, as long as we're not attending church. And then I thought uh, he said something uh, very, very, um, you know, striking to me that uh, somebody posed a question to him over whether or not if uh, a Muslim comes to take his daughter in marriage, takes the hand of his daughter in marriage, and an Igbo who is not a practicing Jew also wants to marry his daughter, who should he give his daughter to? I thought that was a trick question. But he was very, very, um, you know, um, uh, you know, erudite. He was, you know, just very insightful uh, in the way he, uh, you know, um, um, you know, tackled the question. He said he will give his daughter to an Igbo Christian because he knows any day he can convert him. He can no, not convert. He can bring him on board into Judaism. But a Muslim can always will always go back to his roots. And uh, since he's a Muslim, chances are, not, uh, uh, you know, uh, there, there's less uh, chance for uh, for him to be converted to Judaism. So, so you know, you know, we were just uh, touching on different uh, aspects of uh, Igbo Jewish life. So I thought that was a brilliant, uh, you know, and extraordinary uh, attempt to um, dissect uh, what is uh, a very uh, complicated, uh, you know, nuanced, uh, you know, uh, you know, view uh, on phenomenon, you know. So that uh, if uh, you know uh, a, a Muslim wants to marry my, my daughter, uh, and a Christian also wants to marry my daughter, who should I give my daughter to? Assuming my daughter is uh, you know one that is amenable and pliable to um, you know my you know choosing for her, of course many all my daughters are not even going to listen to to me to uh, you know for me to choose uh, their uh, spouses for them. You know they're very independent. They. You know, you know, they have a mind of their own. 
but we're just uh, speaking hypothetically. Um, I would choose a, um, an Igbo, not uh, because I'm, I'm, you know, you know, tangentially, uh, you know, uh, tribalistic, but it's just being pragmatic and, uh, you know, you know, practical. That uh, I want to choose uh, somebody who is likely uh, to uh, someday uh, to come to the synagogue to worship, because uh, whether Igbo are Christians or Muslims or whatever, uh, you know, religion they ascribe to, uh, you know, by heritage, by ancestry, they're Jews even though they're not practicing. And we do see that too, even uh, within Anglo-Saxon, uh, you, know, sp you know, spaces. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, you know Anglo-Saxon, you know, Jews are not practicing Jews. They are not in the Orthodox, they are not in the Messianic, they are not in the Constructionist, they are not in any form of Judaism. They're just secular Jews, you know. So, um, you, know, they, you know, they don't go to synagogue. They don't, they don't even wanna, you only know them by their names, Cohen, uh, you know, Cohen, you know, uh, Bloomberg. Uh, you know, Stude Becker, you know, Stein, uh, you know, so I'm a Cohen myself, you know, you know, my name is, I'm Cohen. Very soon I'm going to make it official. My name is going to be Cohen because I'm a Levite. I, I work in the synagogue. I'm of the, you know, Kohanim. Uh, Kohanim is a, a Hebrew word or, you know, uh, some of those uh, maybe Sephardic or Ashkenazi word for, uh, uh, you know, one who serves in the synagogue, you know, Cohen, uh, Austin Cohen, you know. But it's not official, so I'm still, you know, studying, uh, you know, because I'm, I'm making a transition from Christianity, you know, which I'd, I shouldn't have even belonged in the first place. Even when they were anointing me a pastor, I, I, I still had my doubts. I, you know, my, 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 you know, my, my heart, even though my body was there in the church, but my heart was somewhere else in the synagogue. Um, and then, uh, you know, so we also talked about uh, what took us to, so long. What took us so long to, to have this epiphany, to have this aha moment where, you know, we're now, you know, reemerging and, uh, you know, making the search into the, into the synagogues from the churches. You know, what took us so long? And uh, we were thinking maybe, you know, it's the, it's the appointed time of, of Hashem, the appointed time of Adonai, the appointed time of Elohim. Because, you know, he, uh, he, he may not come when we want him, but he is uh, uh, an on-time God. Is just coming in the nick of time when uh, there's going to be unanimity of vision among Igbos. You know, maybe in the, if if in the 60s or in the 70s we wanted to uh, force the issue of uh, Judaism on our people, uh, it could have uh, it could have been a resounding uh, you know catastrophic failure. But this is the appointed time. You know, nobody's being pushed, nobody's being coerced. People are just voluntarily. Uh, you know, uh, going into the synagogues, uh, you know, um, devoting their resources and time building synagogues uh, where our people can reconnect with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our Elohim, our Adonai, our Hashem, our, you know, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So we also, uh, you know, talked about, uh, we also talked about, uh, you know, um, you know, creating a awareness, you know, in North America, where we are currently, uh, you know, you know, hustling and pursuing a different uh, preoccupation. Uh, you know, we need to get our people together. Uh, we have the opinion that, uh, w you know, the Igbo unions, the Enambra union, Imo union, Abia union, they have, uh, it's, uh, it's not accomplishing much. But if we can get our people under the umbrella of Judaism, you know, as Jews, uh, you're going to see the way in which God is going to lift us up uh, from our present uh, predicament. Um, so we, we, we talked about, uh, you, know, you know, meeting up again, uh, you know, trying to, you know, create awareness amongst our people in, a, uh, in North America so that we can come together, you know, possibly establish a synagogue uh, where we can, you know, worship our God. We don't have any right now. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of Anglo-Saxon people have been, Anglo people have been inviting me to synagogues. You know, I go, you know, but uh, uh, we must have to have our own synagogue you know, that will cater to our own interest based on our own culture, based on our own background. Synagogues are not the same. They're different. You can go to Synagogue A, um, you know, their vision, their virtues, their values are different from uh, Synagogue C, Synagogue D, and so on and so forth. So um, while I appreciate the invitation, people have been extend extending, Anglo-Saxon uh, Jews have been extending to me to come to their synagogues and worship with them. Um, but I, I do want our own, uh, you know, synagogue. Remember, synagogues are still very segregated, uh, you know, spaces. You know, um, you know where, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, people just want to, you know, identify based on, uh, you know, 
certain attributes, certain characteristics, certain features, you know, you gotta be, you know, Caucasian, you gotta be Anglo-Saxon, you gotta be, you know, light skin, blue eyes and blonde head uh, for you to be fully accepted and integrated uh, in uh, Anglo-Saxon synagogues. Uh, similarly, um, you know, if you go to other synagogues of Asian, you know, belonging to Asians or other, um, you know, ethnic ethnicities, uh, you see them in their own little circle too. I guess uh, that's how it was in the Bible. You know, you know, uh, you know. The first church that was established in Jerusalem was populated by Jews, not even Christians. They were Jews, and then of course, uh, Christianity is an offshoot of Judaism. And uh, ever since th that period, you know, ancient Israel, you know, people have always segregated, not out of uh, animosity or you know, you know, some animals or some inimical and hostile intentions, but uh, you know, just you know, just so that they can reason together, you know. So, um, you know, uh, Mr. Remy, Ilona, and I will continue to engage uh, one another so that we can be able to, um, you know, have a, a common space in which we can interact, in, in which we can, uh, you know, worship our God, you know. It's not going to be um, an easy task, but it's doable. We're Igbos. And then we have, uh, you, know, you, you know, here we also talked about... Uh, um, uh, you know the uh, some of the existential struggles. Uh, you know um, uh, the the Jews, uh, Ethiopian Jews, with they call uh, called falashas. Some of them take umbrage to being addressed as falashas. Falashas are like strangers in a foreign land. Um, you know some of them. You know um, I don't think uh, their foray or their you know immigration into Israel has uh, um, uh, been. Uh, you know they were not. They have not been able to leverage all the opportunities there. Uh, because of maybe um, you know poor you know you know you know you know fundamentals for poor foundations you know from uh, Ethiopia poor structures because Israel is a you know a sophisticated you know complicated society where you you gotta you gotta show up with some some skill set you gotta show up with some critical thinking skill I'm not saying that the people lack critical thinking skill but you gotta show up with some energy you gotta show up with some attitude you know in order to be able to successfully compete with, uh, uh, you know, the Anglo-Saxons and other communities there. Uh, but if you're going there, you know, with uh, a lackadaisical, you know, nonchalant attitude, um, you know, the, you're going to be left behind. You know, you know the, the, the economic prosperity that is uh, reminiscent and replete within the, uh, you know, reminiscent of and replete uh, in the, uh, you know, uh, Israeli society <clears throat> may, uh, you know, elude you. So, but we were saying if uh, uh, the shoe were to be on the other foot, uh, meaning if uh, Igbos uh, had the opportunities uh, the Ethiopian Jews had, uh, we'll probably you know, take over the land of Israel because we will do that. Uh, we would do that because uh, you know we are very aggressive. We're very um, not in a negative way, but in a in a way to succeed. You know, wherever we go to, we we try to succeed. Uh, just like uh, Anglo-Saxon Jews, Igbos are all over the world, even in uh, Antarctica, even in uh, in the Arctic. Arctic is in the North Pole. Antarctica is the South Pole. Very cold regions uh, that is uh, inhospitable uh, with their inclement uh, you know weather conditions. Igbos will succeed there. And there's uh, an aphorism or an axiom or a maxim uh, that uh, postulates that uh, uh, if people, uh, uh, if, if uh, you go to a place uh, and Igbos are not there, that means uh, there, nobody, there's no human population there. And that's true. You see them everywhere. I saw one video where, uh, you know, an Igbo guy was uh, making a video and there was uh, this, uh, you know, drizzle of snow, you know, that uh, you know, almost covered his uh, entire outfit. I think he was probably in Russia or in you know, you know one of those uh, cold regions, and uh, he was uh, you know recounting uh, his experience, you know how he what what he goes through in order to make money, and then when he um, attempts to uh, you know um, you know like appropriate some of the uh, his earnings to the people in Nigeria uh, who uh, don't get satisfied with, uh, you know, whatever he gives them. And he said he, he needed to make that video so that people can see the weather condition under which, uh, you know, he gets his hustle on, the, the weather condition under which he works in order to make a living. So I was thinking that uh, it's not everybody that is going to, you know, survive there. I have engaged with an Ethiopian who uh, left, uh, you know, who left... Uh, you know, it's not Hawaii. I think it's a, 
you know, one of those cold regions close to Russia, you know, one of the United States states. He left there, you know, citing cold conditions. I say, well, Igbos will stay there as long as said, you know, there's a human habitation, human population there. So, so we did, uh, you know, talk about, uh, you know, you know, different things, and uh, he's uh, he's pursuing a, a PhD degree in. Uh, um, in religious studies, and he said he did that on purpose in order to further um, uh, expand and uh, extend his uh, uh, understanding of uh, Igbo uh, ancestry, Igbo Jewish ancestry, Igbo Jewish uh, Hebrew, uh, Igbo Hebrew uh, connection, Igbo um, Israelite, uh, you know, background. You know, so he just did it. You know, even though uh, it's not, uh, it's gonna. Uh, put him at a competitive disadvantage in terms of uh, finding a job. You know, you know, you know, people who want to find a job in America will have to study medicine, nursing, uh, special education, mathematics, and things like that. But uh, he did that. He's studying uh, religious, uh, you know, religious education uh, at the PhD level as a sacrifice, as an altruistic, uh, you know, um, you know, based on an altruistic motive in order to be able to fully, uh, you know, engage in a research and a, a exploration uh, of, uh, you know, Igbo, uh, you know, Jewish ancestry. I thought that was, a, uh, you know, something very, very, uh, you know, extraordinary that he's uh, attempting uh, to do. Um, and then we did, uh, you, know, you know, talk about family, family life, you know, how, um, you know, he's making a, you know, great sacrifice just to, uh, you know, keep his own family comfortable, uh, to make them happy. You know, you know, we both, uh, you know, we, we are, you know, family oriented people, you know, um, you know, why, how he says, you know, you know, just not uh, forgetting about his family, just like myself. I don't ever forget family. Family is everything to make sure that uh, the, the children, you know, go attend good schools, good, uh, uh, you know, private schools, you know, uh, good universities. Um, so we had a unanimity of, uh, you know, um, you know, vision uh, in that, uh, you know, family, uh, you know, um, you know, family orientation and, uh, you know, you know, family, you know, you know, thought process. And uh, would you also talk about, uh, you know, why he, uh, you know, went all the way to uh, the University of, uh, you know, Riverside, which is very, very far from here. It took us almost two hours to travel from Los Angeles to uh, Riverside. Um, and I've been to uni uni Riverside before to go and purchase a car for somebody in Nigeria. Uh, but it was really, really far because the GPS uh, took us to very far, you know, took us to uh, a very, you know, you know long, uh, took us on a long journey. So he said uh, it was the only place uh, he, you know, he was offered the admission. I said, why didn't you go to University of uh, Irvine, you know, UC Irvine, which is uh, like, you know, 15, 20 minutes from Los Angeles. So he didn't get the offer. He only got the offer, uh, you know, from a uh, uh, University of, uh, uh, you know, Riverside, University of California, Riverside. And, you know, I you know, told him that I attended uh, both public and private university. I attended the University of, uh, um, you know, here in America, I attended the California State University, Dominguez Hills. Um, then from uh, and then I went to do my doctorate degree. Uh, I went to uh, obtain my doctorate degree from a private university, uh, one of the most sophisticated, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, research-based private universities called the uh, Argosy University. Uh, by the way, Argosy means a ship loaded with uh, uh, treasures. You know, so that's where I got my own treasure, and um, I'm leveraging it. Um, you know, people, you know, you know, have been, you know, oh, well, they've been, they've been asked, all it does is just speak, uh, you know, big English, you know, we don't understand, well, we don't understand what he's saying, we don't, you know, he speaks, can he come to our level, but, well, you, you might get a translator, you know, because you guys are the ones who asked us to go to school, you asked us to go to university, you asked us to go to college, so, and, and I did. So, and, you know, I, I had to, you know, uh, go to, uh, you know, I had to do exactly, uh, you know, what you asked me to do, go to college. So I walked my way to the ellipsis of the of the ivory tower of the academia, you know, uh, along the way speaking, the, you know, the king's English, uh, uh, you know, to the queen's test, and uh, and uh, uh, you know, leveraging uh, all the competencies, cognitions, gifts, and talents that God has anointed me with. So you know, I need you to leverage that excitement rather than you know, um, you know, malign, you know, and wage a war of calumny against me. Um, I know some of some people don't like me. I understand that, you know, and I'm not here to win a popularity contest, because I'm here as a, a sociocultural critic uh, to be able to dissect, uh, you know, deconstruct, uh, exhume, excavate, and examine a phenomenon. 
uh, that uh, you know uh, you know has that have to do sorry with uh, you know social uh, you know so, you know societal problems you know societal issues. Um, so um, you know that's that's uh, that's why I I had to you know take these steps. That's why I had to uh, you know uh, you know go all the way all the nine years to uh, get a quality education for myself so that I can be able to uh, stand to be counted. And and before then I, I attended the Lagos State University in in Lagos State. Um, I obtained a, both uh, um, you know I obtained a MBA the Master of Business Administration. Uh, which uh, I don't even use. I had to give that to my mother, uh, who you know has been very successful using it in selling crayfish, in selling uh, uh, you know paper, in selling uh, um, you know dried fish in the local market in my village. So um, you know, of course, I'm very, very, I'm a very uh, liberal person. All the all the all the degrees that I have, I, I can't use all of them. So I had to like you know transfer some. I gave my mother that uh, you know master of business administration. Uh, in marketing management, so I had to give it to her, and she's been, uh, you know, using it successfully to, um, you know, you know, run her own business when she was very, very active. Um, you know, right now my mother is very sick. You know, you know, she's, you know, dealing with old age. She's probably 85, 80 years, and I'm gonna ask her to transfer it to, you know, one of my siblings or even somebody from her own village. Uh, so that way, I'm being, I'm being uh, liberal. I'm appropriating uh, the gifts, you know, the talents, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> all the, uh, you know, you know, all the uh, expertise that God has uh, anointed me with, uh, so that others can also, uh, you know, receive, a, you know, some kind of blessing from it. So we, uh, so we did talk, you know, we did talk about, uh, you know, um, how we're gonna, you know, use our bully pulpit. To ensure that uh, we bring our people into Judaism, it's not going to be by force. We didn't force our people in the 60s or even before the Nigerian independence. We're not going to force them now. We're going to, you know, it's just through advocacy, you know, through, um, um, you know, making it clear to them that uh, this is where we belong. This is, uh, um, you know, our, you know, our heritage. Um, uh, this is, uh, you know, where we're going to stay. There's no going back once you. Uh, once you uh, find yourself in your roots, in your, um, uh, you know, Jewish uh, ancestry, you, you're not going back. We're not going to the church anymore. Uh, the church has not served our people well. Um, the, 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 this, the church actually should pay a tithe to, to, the, to the church of conscience for, for what, what they have done to our people. They, they have disenfranchised our people and then, you know, um, you know, sold, uh, you know, be, the, the church is no more than an um, a, 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 a oil, oil snake sells, uh, you know, people. They're selling, selling a, uh, you know, fake, uh, um, you know, liturgy, selling uh, fake prophecies to our people, uh, and then, uh, you know, people are, are, are giving all they, they have to the church, and then the, the drivers, uh, you know, driving, uh, 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 you know, Flying on a you know private jets, I'm not I'm not jealous. They're driving uh, the biggest SUVs while the people are uh, you know wallowing in in poverty. So um, you know um, and the, the the church has created this uh, radical social economic inequality, uh, where the, the the pastor and his cronies and members of his family are you know the ones uh, that are m making it big, whereas members of the uh, you know uh, the uh, you know the pew the people in the pew. Uh, are, are different from the people in the pulpit, you know. They, you know, they, so they, we need to go and pull the people out of the pit, the pulpit. Just pull them out of the pit. That's what pulpit is. That's why I like I like uh, Judaism. There's no pulpit. Everybody's equal. It's only the bima, you know, the platform where people go and they recite the uh, the um, the sacred Torah. You know, nobody's standing on any pulpit talking down on anybody. Everybody is, is equal in the <clears throat> in the synagogue. So, so, um, so I, I like what I'm doing right now uh, to create uh, the awareness. Uh, we're gonna expand the, the full arc of uh, you know you know uh, uh, Ju Judaism you know you know within our community, and then we also talked about how other you know ethnic groups that don't have, even have a business in the synagogue are uh, making their foray, uh, you know uh, you know uh, whizzing their way in. They are they are uh, you know. Uh, Talking their way into the synagogues, in the both synagogues, the, it shouldn't be like that. I mean, they they can be invited to come and receive their blessing, but that does not in any way, shape, or form confer on them uh, Jewish ancestry because they're not. 
I understand some Yorubans, you know, you know, come into the synagogue and they create problems there and they leave. Only they come there to spy on our people, see what we're doing. Uh, the same thing with the Bibio people, the same thing with the Robo people. They're not supposed, they have no business in our synagogues. Synagogues are just for Igbos. That's where we belong. That's our roots. Just because uh, we are re-emerging, just because uh, this is a new condition for us, doesn't mean uh, these people should be allowed in the synagogue. I don't know if they are, you know, leveraging on their, um, you know, maybe economic, uh, you, know, uh, you know, advantage, their economic power uh, to, you know, thug themselves into Igbo Jewish synagogues. They're not supposed to be there. I don't, I, you know, the ones I've attended, I don't, you know, only the Igbos and the Anglo-Saxons go to that synagogue. Because if you're not an Igbo and you're finding in the synagogue, I'm going to call you out on it because you're, you belong in the church. We don't belong in the church. We belong in the synagogue because we're Igbos, we're Hebrews, we're Jews, we're Israelites. So we did talk about that, you know, and uh, um, he said, yes, he called, he did sound the alarm that a Yoruba man, you know, in an Igbo synagogue, probably in Abuja or somewhere, uh, is, is more harm than good. And, you know, and I agreed with him. I'm not going to allow, uh, you know, people who have no business in the synagogue to be in the synagogue. What, what are you doing in the synagogue? I mean, it's like, uh, you know, if you're not a Muslim, uh, you know, you go to the mosque, except if you have uh, plans to convert or if you have been invited. I've been invited several times, you know, by my friends. They just want me to explore. Yes, I did go there. I like the people. I like the way they worshipped. Uh, there's a unanimity of purpose. They're very focused when they're worshipping. And I did worship with them. I liked it. You know, so that's the same thing, you know, for, for other nationalities. If you want to go come to the synagogue, you're welcome. But that's the end of your, you know, um, you know, your stay there. You just come there, receive your blessing, and off you go. Because we don't want you in our synagogue. We don't want the, uh, the people who are not Igbos. They can come just uh, to make a passing glance, but not uh, to come there, uh, you know, to, um, uh, to be members, because they're not members. I mean, they can come there and be members, and if they have money, we can appropriate it from them in order to further uh, uh, the interests of our, you know, people in the synagogue. But that, uh, you know, that, that does not, uh, <clears throat> you know, confer on them any rights, uh, you know, privileges as uh, Igbo Jews. So, so we did talk about that. Uh, we, we talked about a lot of things, you know, um, you know, about, uh, you know, his books, you know. Uh, you know, we talked also about, uh, you know, Chimamanda, uh, uh, Chimamanda Adichie, you know, how uh, she's making waves, you know, writing books, and how she got leverage from uh, the forward. Uh, Chinu Achebe wrote in one of, uh, you know, one of her books that kind of uh, lifted her up uh, into the stratosphere of, uh, you know, the literary world, you know. So um, then we, we, we talked about how proud we are of her uh, endeavors and how, you know, hardworking she is. And that didn't come to me as a surprise, you know, um, so, and I, I want to meet with her someday, you know. Um, and then we took a photograph at the airport, you know. There was a, this uh, nice woman who took our pictures and uh, I posted it uh, on my timeline on uh, Igbo Jewish Forum. And I've been receiving, uh, uh, you know, um, a lot of accolades, a lot of uh, uh, critical acclaim, uh, you know, you know with, uh, over that picture. Um, and then one of our, you know, um, uh, Igbo Jewish... Uh, um, forum members, you know, she is a Miss Edina, Miss Edina, uh, uh, Miss Leah Edina. You know, I met her during a, uh, a Jewish conference we had in, uh, um, we had in, uh, you know, Venice, uh, Venice, California. Um, you know, we took a picture too, and then we've been in, in touch, and she joined our forum. You know, she, she, you know, shared pictures of our experience in Israel. Uh, you know, wrote a little, um, you know, anecdote. Uh, shared a lot of pictures, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, into our forum, um, you know, the, you know, and, and when her brother was uh, lighting the, uh, you know, Hanukkah candle, um, you know, the different places uh, she went to. So I thought that was a very, very uh, kind of her to be able to support our, you know, forum, even though she's Anglo-Saxon herself, but she, she knows that we're Jews, you know, you know, you know, she, she, she's, she's giving us, her, you know, moral support and being there. Uh, you know, creating this, uh, you know, uh, multicultural, uh, um, you know, collage 
of uh, our forum. And that's what is attracting a lot of people to Igbo Jewish Forum because of the multicultural uh, nature uh, uh, of the of the forum, you know, multicultural uh, outlook within the, uh, you know, the larger panoply of, uh, uh, you know, the American, uh, you know, and Nigerian uh, uh, national identities. You know, we're bringing in people from different uh, nationalities who are joining our, you know, forum. Um, so that uh, we can be able to, you know, share resources, we can be able to interact with one another. And then I did receive uh, also uh, a lot of, uh, you know, thumb up from our existing, uh, you know, members. Right now, I have uh, like 25 members who are queuing up to be approved to become members. And some of you who watch my videos, uh, you got to be active. Because you don't just want to be a member of uh, Igbo Jewish Forum and uh, you're not being active, you're not posting anything on our timeline, you're not uh, commenting on the posts that people have, uh, uh, you know, contributed, you know. I know uh, Brother Namdi Bethel, he's very, very active, he's always, uh, uh, you know, posting stuff and uh, blessing us. The same thing with uh, Brother Chidi uh, Aralo, he's always uh, posting things about, uh, you know, all the presentations he's making, you know, pictures from their synagogue and their you know, their uh, sacred, uh, you, know, uh, you know, Shabbat worships. Um, why you're not seeing any of my, uh, you know, pictures, you know, Shabbat worship? Because I'm still looking around. But I just believe in, you know, you know opening up a synagogue for our people. And then for Anglo-Saxons who want to come and, uh, you know, um, identify with us. So that's, that's my main, uh, you know, uh, purpose. And I'll continue to make videos. And I'll continue to uh, encourage people to reach out to me, especially those of them living in Southern California, uh, come out of those churches. They don't, they're not going to do you any good. If you're thinking that you're going to go to heaven or you're going to make paradise by being in those churches, that's a bridge too far. That is a bridge too far. Something that is, uh, uh, you know, within, that's not going to be within your reach. But for you to actually, uh, you know, fulfill your destiny as an Igbo man, you got to identify with Omenala. You got to identify, you got to go back to your Jewish roots. Look at Israel, how successful Israel is. Because they're worshipping the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They have gone back to their roots. That's why Israel is uh, the epicenter of democracy in the Middle East, the epicenter of uh, science, the epicenter of uh, uh, you know, um, you know, social media, the epicenter of uh, uh, new media, because they are worshiping a God that is different from uh, the ones they worship in the church. So you need to come. Let us leverage on that same opportunity that uh, has made the Jews uh, you know, extraordinary people. The Jews of, uh, you know, Anglo-Saxon Jews, uh, you know, to a like de to a like degree, Igbo Jews. Igbo Jews, uh, we're not doing badly too, but we can do much more for ourselves if we have a unanimity of purpose by coming to establish a a shrine, a sh a synagogue unto God for ourselves. We, we need to, uh, you know, build a, a synagogue for God. We need to build a space in which the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob can come and bless us. So uh, some of you who are watching my video, and a lot of people are thinking about what I'm saying. You know, they, they, I, know I see, you know, uh, you know, they, they, um, I, I see, you know, the software showing me the number of people watching my videos. I don't know if they watch the, the videos from the beginning to the end, but some people do because I see their responses. I see what they are writing. Uh, some, of, some of the things they're writing uh, are not palatable, but it's okay because I, I appreciate that dissenting, divergent, you know, viewpoint. And some of them are, you know, kind enough, you know, to, you know, uh, you know some of them are gracious enough to write things that are, you know, you know that are fuzzy and nice, you know. I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't really, you know, relish, or, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, things that are, you know, that make me feel good. I don't, I'm, you know, I want you to tell me the truth. That's called, a, uh, that's called, a, uh, you know, a critical, uh, you know, patriotism. That, 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 uh, that I love you well enough to tell you the truth. Yeah, you gotta tell me the truth. You know, a lot of people have taken on bridge with the fact that I'm identifying Igbos and, and referring to them as Jews, you know, and, uh, and I'm making changes, you know, trying to, you know, create some kind of balance where, you know, I refer to Igbos as Jews, at some time as Hebrews, at some times as uh, Israelites, you know, so in order to create that balance. I'm not, uh, uh, you know, defiant or obstinate or hard-headed, but I'm somebody who, uh, you know, can shift ground and, and uh, come to middle ground. 
So uh, some of you who, who have been, uh, you know, writing, uh, you know, on my, uh, you know, timeline, you have been making comments. Uh, keep the comments coming. You know, I don't. Uh, it doesn't matter whether they are critical. It doesn't matter whether they are uh, mean. It doesn't matter whether they are, uh, you know, they are nice. And you know, you know, I'd rather want them to be, uh, you know, to be straight to the point. I rather, I rather want your comments to, um, you know, be critical of my shortcomings. You know, uh, you know, the, because uh, you know the the ill effects of, uh, you know, people just writing things that make you happy is that uh, you're gonna miss the point you you will not be able to you not have the opportunity to uh, to expand your worldview to expand your insight and uh, you know your um, you know viewpoints about uh, things that uh, you rather be you know making changes about things that are you know rather you, things that you should rather be improving upon uh, so some of my videos are long and, and it's intentional because I have a lot to say so to, today's video um, I'm looking at the timer there it's gonna uh, be like a 50 minutes and uh, at the end of 50 minutes I'm gonna uh, just stop this video and uh, until I come your way again this is your uh, high priest bringing you word and uh, before uh, I close I want you to you know you know click I want you to subscribe subscribe means uh, it doesn't cost you anything it's just that uh, every time uh, I release a video you get the alert first uh, and I want you guys to you know those of you living in South America in, in uh, North America not South America North America especially in uh, uh, Southern California you gotta reach out to me so that we can uh, you know have a, a, our own synagogue until I come your way again this is high priest bringing you word thank you very much